Hey, welcome back to my channel. So happy that you're here today. And I'm so excited to bring in my next guest, Gloria Grace Rand. <laughs> she reached out to me. She found me on my YouTube channel, saw one of my videos and um, about forgiveness and was so touched by the story and thought she, her story would be great on my platform. And I have to agree. I read her book and I'm telling you, we have more in common than she realized. And I can't wait to bring those connections to this audience today. So stay listening. She's coming in for an interview. We're going to look at her modality and how she helps people heal. And we're also going to be uncovering what she means by live, love and engage. And it's all about connecting and to your own self love. I mean, my God, can't wait. So stay watching. It's coming up next. Gloria, yay! So happy that you're here today. So excited to get to know you better, although I have to admit, I feel like I already know you. So we've been talking offline. I read your book, loved your book, related to your book on so many different levels. So I can't wait for the audience to hear all the connections between you and I. We were talking a little bit offline about where we are in our life. And let me just set up today's interview for those listening. We're going to get to know each other. We're going to talk about your beautiful book. We're also going to talk about all the different modalities and the spiritual story that led you to where you are. So you fit so nicely on two, actually a lot of playlists, more like five, but the one I'm most focused on is the teaching intuition piece. I want people to hear your spiritual story we're sharing. And I also want them to know what modality you have. So we got a whole bunch of goodies in the pantry today to share. So I'm going to get quiet and I'm going to give you a beautiful opportunity to introduce yourself to my audience and let's get right to getting to know each other. Welcome. Well, thank you so much, Jeannie. I am delighted to be here and I can't wait for this conversation as well. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I am Gloria Grace Rand. And I have been saying that I was a spiritual alignment coach and that helping women with confidence. And I do that. And I've also realized that I've been in business since 2009 and I've been resisting that <laughs> lately, and I really realized that I can and do help women entrepreneurs to grow their business, and especially spiritual entrepreneurs like myself, because so often, and you probably are aware of this as well, Jeannie, so often spiritual heart-centered entrepreneurs struggle with making money because we want to be able to just give, give, give but not realizing that we need to also be able to start with filling our own cup up first so that we are able to serve our clients. And we'll get into that. But you yeah. want to know about my spiritual journey. It is, I'd say in a way, it actually started when I launched my business in 2009, because at the same time that I did that was when I started a meditation practice. Were you just open to that around that time? Did something else happen in your life that was asking you to kind of dig deeper? So take me there a little bit on what was going on in your life that you were seeking meditation and stuff like that. Well, so yeah, I thank you for asking that. I should have clarified that. So let me back up a little bit more. My Before I was started my business in 2009, I actually worked in television for a very long time. I was a a writer and a producer for the nightly business report on public television. And then in 2005, interesting, you mentioned 2005, my husband had an opportunity to uh, take a job in the Orlando area. We were living in Miami at the time, because that's where the show was produced out of the local tele public television station there. And so we moved up to Orlando. And so I wasn't able to work full time anymore. And so I was spending the next couple of years, my kids were in in school and so I had the luxury of being to able to be a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. but I wasn't satisfied with that I really wanted to do something else I dabbled in writing I took a course in writing children's stories I thought maybe I'd be the next JK Rowling but that didn't work out too well and then I got into somehow I got onto this mailing list for a company that taught you how to do copywriting, how to write junk mail, essentially. And 
it, they kept write, having this where it said, can you write a letter like this? And I'm like, well, yeah, I could write a letter like this. And so I invested in that program and that led me to start my own business as an SEO copywriter. So again, this is part of this spiritual journey that I, I started going on. Let and me, Let me admit, think, most people who say they've had a spiritual journey and awakening and the rest of it, I think they've all sought more and, and needed the ability to expand. So I think that's another thing you and I had in common when I was reading your book was that feeling of just like, there's got to be a little bit more out there. So I think that is what you're saying. Would you say yeah, so? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I, I, I always believed in God. I also suspected that I, or let's put it this way. I was not opposed to the idea of reincarnation because it seemed to me that if this is the only life we get, really, this is it. I mean, I want to do over it. <laughs> it's like, cause yeah. there's definitely mistakes I've made in my life. And I hate to think that it's like, this is my one and only shot yeah. to get it right. So yeah. Reincarnation yeah, so for me was the, when I started, I opened the door Many lives, many masters, Brian Weiss trained with him. You know, I mean, just like love his work that opening that door to, oh my gosh, we get to do this again. And the understanding of karma and reincarnation. And this is the only life I'm going to have with my daughter really was the, the, the epiphany that I loved and really leaned into. Um, that was the beginning of wanting and desiring more understanding. So. Absolutely. So yeah, so my sister was healthy, 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 all of a sudden diagnosed with cancer. Got it. And then was stage four, a sarcoma, and prognosis was not good. And because of that, she and I started having conversations about, she would ask me, what do you believe? And, and I would have to start really thinking about what do I believe? But it was really having to have these conversations with my sister, who is 10 years older than me, by the way. So we had, I was likely losing my sister and that she was going to be, you know, she wasn't going to survive this cancer, that we also got the chance to connect and to compare childhoods and to still have, have some time to make some good memories before the end came. And so, so that was good. Two months before she transitioned, and let me back up by saying I was still meditating the whole time. And again, okay. this is where I said that meditation really helped me be there for her. It really helped me to stay grounded, to stay calm, because if any of you out there have dealt with anyone who's gone through a serious illness, you know that they're not always the most pleasant people to be around because they're in pain and it gave me an opportunity to just really be present, to be there for her, not lose my cool. You know, there's many people who are listening right now who meditate because if they're following your channel or mine, they do. But I think it's a good place to interject since both of our channels are about educating people. When I first started meditating, there's, you know, it was, it, it was to get grounded. So, and then there's other people who are trying to get connected, right? So there's so today, right? There's so many, you can, people who are listening, you can type in whatever you're going through. Today, I needed a hypnosis to heal my cells. And I was biking when I was doing it. You can be specific about any genre or need that you have in your own body towards meditation. And so I think sometimes when we say meditation, it, we it, everybody pictures somebody on a hasset somewhere, you know, quiet in, in the field or whatever. But there are so many kinds and ways to meditate. So I just wanted to do a little interject there to let people know if if they're connecting or on their own spiritual journey, everybody touts how important meditation is. And it is for so many reasons. Okay, so sorry, I didn't, didn't mean to cut you off, but it just seemed like a really good place to put that in. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it was great. So anyway, so what really jump started, I guess, my my spiritual awakening was the fact that two months before my sister transitioned, I was, I was back home in Florida at this time, and I was meditating as usual. And all of a sudden, I heard this voice say, you should write a book about love. And I remember opening my eyes, looking around going, who said that? Yeah, who said that? But not only that, why would I write a book about love? I write about online marketing. <laughs> that's what my business was. I was an SEO copywriter. 
And I thought, this is, I'm not qualified to talk about love. It seemed crazy. And yet, as what happens so often when the universe wants us to do things, they make it easy for us. Mm -hmm. And the signs are there. We just need to be aware, aware of them. And so later that day, I'm going through my email and there was an email from Hay House and they were advertising a writer's boot camp to teach you how to write a book. And I went, okay, God, I guess you're serious. You really want me to write this book? Okay, fine. So I invested in that course. And then, of course, then life got in the way because my sister started really not doing well. And she wound up in hospice care and, and transitioned a couple months later. So it took me a while before I was able to get into really writing the book. And it was through frankly, the help of a coach that I was working with at one point, that it finally dawned on me why I had to write this book. I thought it was going to be this self-help book to help people because love turned out to be an acronym. And that was the other thing that came to me actually that, that morning as I was, as soon as I got this idea, was love was an acronym. And it, the L stood for let go and let God. Mm -hmm. The O was open your heart to receive. The V is value your uniqueness. Mm. And the E is embrace your divinity. I love, I love that. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. And and I mean, I was just kind of like, okay, that was interesting. Later, I realized just how powerful that was. And and that's nothing new in a way, you know, because there are lots of other spiritual teachers out there who teach it. But they phrase it differently. Yeah. But again, this message was for me. And that was what I realized. It was for me. I needed to learn how to love myself. And gosh, I still get like teary-eyed when I think of it because it's it's it was just so profound because I'm really even on the outside, people might have thought I was a happy person and was very content with my life. And I had a lot to be grateful for. I had a lot of wonderful blessings in my life. And at the same time, I also really wasn't being 100% true to myself. I wasn't speaking up and letting people know what I wanted. I think every person in the world, but let's just focus on women today, I think every woman in the world needs to write their story if they want to first help the world because we have so much to share, but more importantly, if you want to really connect to self. So it is such a great experience for the soul, right? Because you had to write all those words down and go through that. And I've, I've got a whole bunch on my channel too that talk about how to do that. And, and so I know we're going to dive a little bit more into that when we get into the business side of what you do for people. So um, love your story. So are, at this point, your sister, after she passes away, you get the call to write this book. Are you totally immersed in the spiritual side of all aspects of yourself and you're doing spirituality for people now? Or are you still mostly on the other side of your brain in the business? I was, <laughs> I was one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake because I, at the time, when she had passed, I was in a program, I was in a mastermind to learn how to run masterminds. And so I was working with business coaches. I was trying to figure out what to do with my business. But at the same time, there's like, I need to write this book. I've got to write this book. And it's, and it's about love. And I'm trying to figure out that. And then I'm grieving the loss of my sister also. And that, that hit me a lot harder than of, of anyone that I've lost in my family, mostly I think because number one, I was there, I was in the room when she transitioned. And secondly, she was the last member of the immediate family that I grew up with. And that was my last tie. And so I was just not prepared for just how much grief I was going to go through. So it really took a couple more years before I f something major happened in my life where I was at a business conference and I was with, with a lot of women, I'm sitting at this table and a woman gets up to speak and she's a coach, but what she was gonna be sharing with us was that she also channels something called light language. Got it. And 
she talked about how she used to do this as a little girl and then she stopped and then she had gone through some stuff in her life with the divorce and things and started uh, doing this and then she demonstrated for us. So I'm sitting at this table and I'm listening to her and I started crying. Tears are going down my face and it's like, what is going on? And it was something that my soul was just like, oh, this is what we needed. This is what you needed, finally. And I went to work with her right gonna, after that because I was I'm like, gonna what ask you, is this? I'm yeah. gonna, gonna ask you to educate my people because one yeah. of my focuses is spiritual modalities. And when you and I were emailing each other back, setting up and getting ready to do this. I said, Oh, light language. I've never even mentioned this on my channel. So can we take a little second yeah. to just open up the door, you know, give people a little sample of what this modality is, where can people learn more? I mean, give me whatever you can in a short um, interview, right. To, to yeah, open up absolutely. the door so people know that language, that would be great. I, I would love to. So light language the way I describe it is it's a communication. It's a channeled communication that speaks to your soul. Okay. So it is, there's lots of different ways that people do it. Some people write it and they'll write symbols that kind of look like hieroglyphics, frankly, to me anyway, other people speak it, they sing it, they sign it with their hands. I do everything but write, which I find fascinating because I've always been this writer but I feel that it's also the universe's way of saying you don't use your voice often enough. And you, and I've always loved to sing. I was in church choirs and things like that. My mom loved to sing. So I, I do the singing a lot through it. And it is a very healing modality. It really, it, it, it's very relaxing. People who hear it, it, it really helps you with eliminating stress. And it's a it's, it's changed my life in so many ways. Where does somebody go? Like you had this experience. I I've had yeah. an experience. Someone in my group got up and did, and did an offering once of light language. And I had the yeah. same experience that you did. I've never leaned in since then, but so today I'm thinking, well, I'd like to do this. Where do people go? Can they go to YouTube? Can they follow you to do, do they get a book? I mean, where do people start to lean in? I decided to ask AI. <laughs> Light language, also known as the universal language, refers to a form of communication that involves the use of sounds, symbols, and even gestures. They are believed to carry an energetic and vibrational frequency. It is often described as a nonverbal or multidimensional language that transcends the limitation of traditional spoken languages. Light language is not tied to any specific culture or religion, but is said to originate from the higher realms or dimensions. Those who channel or speak light language claim that it can convey information, healing energies, and even frequencies that have the potential to activate and awaken certain aspects of consciousness. Let's get back to Gloria Grace Rand's definition of light language. Um, all of the above. So I, I will say that I do have some light language uh, recordings on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I do on my podcast, when I do a solo episode, I, I always end the episode with, with a light language. Mm -hmm. And I would also say you can also certainly Google light language because that's where I went. Okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, we always do that. We always Google it. So I found and I found there was a, a woman named Jamie Price who's been doing this for a long time. She's written a book about it. And so I like got the book and I'm reading about it. And 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 then since then I've read other people's stories who who also do it. It's it's still fairly new. Yeah, it's still even though I think a lot of people have been doing it for maybe 10, 20 years, but it's not as, I don't want to say popular, but I'd say it's not as well known uh, in, in. Would I be off? Sound would I be off base if I said, when you said light language and when I heard it the first time, this is just what comes to mind in my little Catholic brain. So bear with me. Um, I'm thinking of tongues. 
is exactly. it is it kind of the energy of you know somebody who speaks a language and 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 so could it be referenced to something similar? Yeah, it it, it could, and and it's interesting. There's a, there's people out there who are like, oh, it's definitely it's not the same as speaking in tongues, and then other people are like, it is similar to speaking in tongues. Okay. So my again, I, when I've asked my guides for information about it what i was told is that it is the language that we spoke before we came into these bodies on the earth and then it's the language that we speak when, when we leave and there's different just like there's different dialects and there's different languages on earth that we speak you know depending on where you live what i have found as well is that there are definitely different dialects or or of light language that come through because when I've worked with clients sometimes it comes out one way and then I had I had one experience with a client where it sounded to me almost like Latin chant and which was the first time that's ever happened never happened again and I feel it was because I think whatever reason that God, spirit, the universe said this is what would resonate with her. And that's why we're going to we're going to have it come through that way for her. Well, that makes total sense to me, too, because we're both readers, right? So you're mm-hmm. an intuitive also. And when I'm li- when I'm giving information for people, sometimes I'll say, are you into chess? Because like, why am I seeing chess figures? You know, sometimes things show up that are for them make no sense to me, but it's because they're asking us to speak their language. So I just love that. Okay. Well, thank you for that. And I'm going to ask at the very end, will you remind me, maybe we could end today's video with a little light language and we'll go out that way. I would love that. I would be happy to do that. Okay. So remind me. (laughs) So, so this is such a good conversation. I want to go and dive in a little bit deeper too. When we first started talking today offline, you said you were just, you were being led to step more into the business coaching piece from the spiritual. And I just want you to share with my audience that that bridge that you're on right now, because I was going to ask you this whole set of questions about, you know, where, how can people work with you, Gloria? And, you know, what's your offering? And I think I was sharing with you that I saw that you might've had a retreat in Melbourne and that got canceled, but like, wow, there's so much you do. So take us to the bridge that you're on and your intentions for 2023. It sounds like a really good segue if someone wants to work with you and learn more about what you do. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and this has been my sort of been my dilemma over the last few years is trying to, I had one coach tell me, she says, I keep seeing spiritual SEO for you, Gloria. And so I was trying to figure out how to, how to marry this side, because I didn't want to throw out all of the time that I'd spent learning about how, how to run a business, learning about how to get content to be able to help pe- business owners to be able to be found online. So I finally have realized, oh, okay, I know who I want to help. I want to help spiritual entrepreneurs because they are the people who are into heart-centered services. They are into woo-woo. They're into personal development. These are my peeps. That's who, <laughs> that's who I yes. am. And so I, I realized that, and I got a lot of value to teach them and to be able to help them to grow their business with ease and grace because that's, I think, ultimately what we want. We want to be able to have money, but we also don't want to be stressed out in the process. We want to be able to have it be a way that allows us to be generous where we can be with our clients and help them to understand the value, to value themselves so that they can price their services in a way that's going to help them make money and still be able to attract the kind of clients they want to work with. So. I, that's what I want to do now is, is off, offer coaching to, to help them. And, and then I have all these tools in my toolbox that I know a lot of what keeps, you know, 90%, I think of, of what keeps some entrepreneurs from success is mindset. Mm-hmm. And so I've got lots of ways to be able to help you with that. The, the love method is what I call it in my book, the light language I'm a Reiki Reiki practitioner as well, so I can help you with that, but I've also got the tangible 
hard knocks of being in business now for 14 years. <laughs> so I, I can teach you, help you avoid the mistakes I made and, and, and then teach you, you know, good ways to be able to grow your business. You're reminding me back in 2005, when we were talking about kind of when we started well, back then it was called the shift and now it's called the ascension, right? So back yeah. then we were talking about how, you know, how were we all shifting and what was happening in the world was getting bigger and, you know, lawyers and bookkeepers and accountants were having Buddhas and mindfulness and uh, law of attraction into their corporate jobs, right? So all that was already happening back then 20 years ago. And I remembered thinking, well, the shift was that we were to stay in our jobs. We were not supposed to leave and start being healers on the street again. We've done that, okay? So we were supposed to bring spirituality into mainstream, and that was really going to be, and here we are 20 years later talking about the Ascension. And the Ascension's all about like workers coming together to do the work outwardly and openly, but with money, because the more money you have, the more impact you can make, and, and the world just keeps. So see how much we have in common. I know. I love right? it. <laughs> so I love it. If, you, if someone was listening, who was an entrepreneur, who was a light worker or a spiritual person, and they were just getting ready to start their businesses. And before I ask this question, I want to just mirror something you were saying earlier. When I used to help women start businesses, the first thing they would do, they would show up to a meeting at our WBON network. It was a whole network for women. And we're talking the fundamentals how to stand up and say who you are, what colors to wear on camera, how to go to a networking event and work the room. I mean, these were like basic foundation, elevator pitch, you know, so many people need that education. You feel because of where we are with technology is your whole brand on the media side, or is it still all connected to public appearance and or is it business side? Good question, huh? Ooh, that is a good question. I'm going to have to think about that. I want to say both and, or or or, or all in inclusive. I I had started coming up with a new tagline last year, which was messages from the heart, and love it because it incorporates not only the SEO copywriting that I was doing, but it also incorporates light language, and. I, I still feel that that resonates and even even with where I'm evolving into now in because it's still it is it's about not only me sharing messages from the heart but also helping my clients to be able to do the same because that's really about tapping into your really connecting with your soul connecting with your higher self so that then when you do that, then you are able to communicate and you're able to attract clients so much easier. I know I found it for myself. I, even though it may sound at times like I'm still struggling a little bit, but I, I come light years away from where I used to be. And I would be really doing that elevator pitch was still a struggle not too many years ago. And now I'm is that from the self-esteem pitch? Is that the is that the loving yourself? I know your whole book is connected yeah. to that sense and stuff. And I, from your story and reading your book, I I saw that kind of journey as you did a great job sharing it in your story. But yet you get on camera today and you're on your Facebook and you know and like you do, you have that skill set. So how far you've come, and so you can help people with that that transition. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's yeah. such a need for that. So I think we're, we've done so much. We might have to do another interview. Actually, we're getting ready to, I'm going to be on your show, right? So yes. there's so much more to talk about. But because of time, I want my audience to answer one more question. This is my wrap up question for you. Um, because of where we are in the world and the conversation we've just had. Here we are, we're coming out of COVID, so much more is happening online. There's so many more beautiful opportunities for women to share their stories and write their books. And, the, and if you're marketing your business, whether you're doing Reiki or intuitive readings or tarot, you have to be doing this on social media and Zoom and the rest of it. So what is your 
spiritual and business advice for people for where we are right now in the world? What would you like to offer them as a, uh, a nugget for your coaching out to what spiritual people need to know about the business world right now and where we are? Well, that's, now, a, can of worms. That's, that, that's, a, that's a mouthful. Well, I, I think it all still stems down to the, the subtitle of my book is how to stop doubting yourself and start being yourself. Mm. And I also share in, in the beginning of the book, I, I put a quote in there and I'm not going to have it exactly, but it was the point of the only person standing in your way is you. So you need to get out of your way and start living the life that you want to live or start creating the business that you want to create and not worry necessarily about what this person says it's supposed to be like or whatever. that person says you need to be on TikTok and you need to be doing all these other things. No, you need to be true to yourself. And, and I know that sounds cliche even, but there's a reason why these things become cliche is because there's truth in it. Yeah. You so, said something early, early, the very beginning, maybe the first two minutes of our interview, and I go back to that, you said, you started getting messages that you were supposed to do this. And then you said, and then you know what happens, the universe does what it does. And I was like, what's she going to say here? And you said, it got really easy. And I think that's what you just said again, like, here you are having intentions and people want to do, and they know in their heart where I'm doing a whole subset right now about leaning into that, right? Like, how do you know the opening? Follow the opening, right? My whole group will know what that means. So here we are following that leaning in and following universal, and it's supposed to be easy. It's the hard things that are the go the wrong way, right? So great advice for everybody. So I think that is a nice way to ask my last question, which is when you knew it was going to interview you today and you really wanted to make sure that you got said what got said, did I miss anything? This would be your chance to make sure that we haven't missed a stone is not unturned. Well, I think you've done a really good job of having me be able to share my story. And I hope that it has inspired your audience, I hope somebody out there is listening today and will take to heart. Here's here's one piece of advice. This is the one thing I want to say is that, and this is something that my mom always said, was that God doesn't make junk. And so you are a divine, awesome, amazing being created in God's image I don't care what religion you are or what you believe, but just know that you are here for some purpose. Mm -hmm. It could be something as simple as maybe you're here to be a hairdresser. Maybe you're here to create wonderful poetry. It doesn't matter. Maybe you're here to clean up garbage. I don't know, but you're here. You are here for a reason and appreciate that and just love yourself and when you can love yourself, then you're going to be able to love other people. And I think that's one of the areas that we're lacking in this world right now is, is where all of this angst comes from and, and conflict is people aren't loving themselves. Gotcha. And so I encourage you to spend some time getting to know yourself better. And that takes us right into that ascension that we keep talking about, right? Because we have to do it together. So if everybody moves in the right direction and, and we all know love is it, right? So, oh, I love this. I loved getting to know you more. I love your book. It was a great read. It, it was a quick read. And I mean that in the nicest way, because for me, books could take six months on the side of my bed. So it, yours was not that. So it was wonderful. And I really enjoyed getting to know you and sharing your energy with my audience today. So as we promised, I'm going to get quiet so you can do some little love language and we'll kind of go out with that with your permission. This would be my chance to say thank you so much. Normally I end with rapid fire, but this is a much better way to end my interview is just in the energy of that. So you let me know when you're done and we'll wave and 
we'll close. Is that sound good or is there anything you need to do to prepare? It sounds perfect. No, I just always set the intention okay. ah, that the message that you get today will be something that is for your soul's highest good. Sakyo,